What's up, guys? <clears throat> so we're back for Bob. Uh, we're on page 176 in Idea. So the tornado just kind of blew in. And right now, uh, the elephants are trying to save Kudzo, the little gorilla, the little baby gorilla. Uh, so this chapter is called An Idea. So I'm going in, says Masika, one of the younger aunts. Might make things worse, Akilo cautions. Displace the mud, pull her down toward the bottom. I could go in, I suggest. The words popping out before I can swallow them. It's more mud than water, Bob. Akilo shakes her head. They get as stuck as Kudzo. I don't exactly argue the point. I've got an idea. Comes a small voice. All the aunties turn to Ruby, and she looks startled to have their complete attention. A couple of us get on the other side of the moat, Ruby says. Grab trunks. We'll make like a, what do you call it? A sling, I explain. A hammock like the gorillas have. I don't know, Ruby, Akilo says. Kudzo grabs for Masika's trunk with both hands. Wait, Masika says. I think I've got her this time. Masika lifts her trunk with deliberate slowness, carefully trying to support the baby gorilla. But, once again, Kudzo... Sorry, once again, Kudzo can't hold on. She lets out a despairing cry. Down she goes, lower this time. Her nose and eyes just visible. Okay, Kelly says, with a nod at Ruby. Let's give Ruby's idea a try. Masika, Maheli, Alodi, cross over to the far side. Zaina, Ruby, and I will take this side. All three elephants move with surprising quickness to the spot where I crossed. They gallop back until they're facing us. It's strange to see them on the other side of the moat, with the wall destroyed. They're technically in Ivan and Kenyani's domain. Move down a bit, Kelo instructs. That way she motions with her head. We want to scoop her out. Now push her down. Three on one side, three on the other. The elephants reach out for each other's trunk, creating a kind of cradle. Okay now, says Akilo. Lower carefully. Down they go into the muddy water. Ruby, Ruby nearly loses her footing, so I grab her tail with my teeth. It doesn't really help, and she yells, Ouch! But my heart's in the right place. Kutso thrashes her tiny arms. Stay calm, my call. Easy for me to say. She looks over at me, and I'll forget the fear in her dark eyes. And I'll never forget the fear in her dark eyes. Then she vanishes below the surface. Team Elephant. Hurry, Ruby cries. The elephants bend lower, moving like a giant elephant shovel. Where is she? Masika asks. Lower, says Akilo. Lower, sisters. There, Ruby yells. No, wait, there. Up, Akilo commands and the interlocked trunks rise from the muddy water to reveal a tiny, trembling baby gorilla, sitting in their makeshift sling. Could so, says a pillow. Stay calm, baby. We're going to toss you to safety, okay? Could so gives a little nod. On my count, says a pillow. Start swinging. One, two, three. Up and over goes the trunks, and up and over goes Kudzo. She lands with a little plop on the gorilla's side of the moat right next to Masika's rear legs. Good work, everyone, says Akello, and good thinking, Ruby. Ah, thanks, elephants, says Kudzo, looking mud from her eyes. That was fun. Can we do it again? Akello takes a deep breath. Maybe later, sweetheart. Quickly, I make my way over the moat. Kudzo, I say, follow me. Let's go find your eight peeps. Can I go with Bob, Ruby, asks Akello? Akello touches Ruby's back with her trunk. I'd much rather you stay here, dear. And it's Mayo. But Uncle Ivan will be pleased. I'll keep an eye on her, I tell Akilo. I'm going, Ruby says in her most determined voice. Maybe I can help. I helped just now. Akilo hesitates. But finally, a slow nod. Probably she figures there's no arguing with Ruby. She's right on that one. Ruby crosses the moat and joins Kudzu and me. Be careful, Akilo warns. There's more of the stone coming. I got her, Akilo, I say. You better have her, she warns. I think I flew, Bob, says Akilo, as he leaves, her out, leaves our way through the wasteland that was Gorilla World. 
Yeah, me too, I say. It's that kind of day. What's out there? A handful of humans, firefighters, and police mostly have begun to roam the grounds, checking out the damage. We pass a park employee with a weapon slung over his shoulder and a net in one hand. Trenton, he tells the passing police officer. We don't know what's out there. She nods. How fast do they work? And something like a big cat? Shakes his head. Not fast enough. I look over at Ruby. Stay close, kid. As we near the gorilla villa, what's left of it? Anyways, a screech hits my ear that makes the wailing police sirens sound like mewing kittens. It's Kinyani. She's practically knuckle running back and forth near the collapsed gorilla villa. Chunks of cement, shredded wooden beams, and bent metal lie everywhere. A cluster of gorilla females and juveniles huddle, not far from some rescue workers. There's Mama Kutsu cries, dashing toward a gorilla named Jody. I'm so horrified by the destruction that I've almost forgotten my muddy little charge. I really shouldn't be trusted as an ape sitter. Kutsu darts over to her mother's waiting embrace. Jody nuzzles her and strokes her and says soothing, motherly gorilla things. Thank you, Jody nods to me. Don't thank me, I say, looking over at Ruby. Thank this little gal. She figured out how to save Kudzo. Thank you, Ruby. Isn't it? Ivan's friend? Ruby gives a shy nod. We all helped. I provided moral support. I am. I flew. Mama, says Kudzo. Of course you did, dear, says Jody. Kinyani's fresh wails focus my mind. I gotta go, I say. Ruby, you should stay here. I'm going for... A no nonsense voice, the one Julia uses on me when she calls me Robert. Let me see what's next. I'll be right back. No way, Uncle Bob Ruby replies, just as firmly. I give up, but I'm afraid of what you might see, of what we both might see. Any sign of Ivan? I ask Jody. She shakes her head, a grim look clouding her eyes. With Ruby by my side, we approach the pile of wreckage that used to be the Gorilla Villa. At that same moment, Ruby and I gasp. There's Ivan's hand, barely peeking through the river. Not moving. I know that hand like the back of my own paw. No, Ruby screams. Uncle Ivan. I check the crowd. No sign of Julia or George. Nothing. No Maya either, or the other keepers I recognize. Just a few employees, several rescue workers, and two or three days looking visitors. Is he alive? A firefighter asks. Hand. Whatever it's called, isn't moving, says another. Weaving my way through the tangle of legs, I climb up the rubber pile. Sniff a bit and bark my loudest. Yes, he's alive. Get your rears and gear, bark. Just like those overachieving rescue dogs in the man's best friend show. I listen for a sound from Ivan, a grunt, a cry for help. Nothing. Still, he smells alive. At least I think he does. And that's good enough for me. Zena. Another dog races over, a tough-looking German shepherd, wearing an impressive glow-in-the-dark vest and some booty things to protect her feet from the rubble. But I hold my ground. This is my friend we're talking about. I lick Ivan's hand. His fingers twitch. Well, that's all it takes to get both of us barking like maniacs. More people gather. I see Maya next to Ruby, which makes me feel better. Name Zena, says the shepherd. Bob. I nudge Ivan's fingers with my nose. Nothing. And this is Ivan, my best bud. Sorry to hear it, she replies, but I don't like the sound of her voice. With great care, and far too slowly for my taste, rescue workers begin moving, removing chunks of the wreckage and tossing them to one side. Zena and me, we mostly stay out of the way, but every once so often I lick Ivan's hand just so he knows we've got him covered. I glance over at Maya and Ruby. Maya's wiping tears from her eyes while she strokes Ruby's ears. Ruby is giving Maya a comforting trunk hug. Little Ruby lies behind beyond her ears. Years, that gap. I check the crowd again. Still no sign of Julia or George. And that's when a, a sickening thought hits me like a bite to my belly. What if Ivan isn't the only one under the rubble? Dragon. More police cars and ambulances arrive at the park. A handful of keepers scream in too, looking frantic and confused. The weirdest thing of all, 
wandering through all the destruction of random park residents, animals, birds, reptiles, residents who definitely do not belong in Gorilla World. A police officer is chasing an armadillo. A great blue heron watches the mayhem from her statue atop a giraffe statue. A wallaby pokes his nose out of a bush, or out of a bush, his saucer eyes catching the fire engine lights. Nets, someone yells. We need more nets. An older gentleman holding a blue umbrella lets out a blood curling scream. Dragon, he cries. I swear to you, I just saw a baby dragon. Sir, says the keeper named Malik. No worries. That's actually a Gila monster. His name is Gilligan. A paramedic raises his hand. They have like venom, don't they? They say a healthy adult won't die from it. Malik shrugs. Although they'll be in some serious pain. Wonderful, the paramedic mutters. I glance over my shoulder to see Sarah running toward it. Maya, I can't hear her words, but I can definitely see the worry in her eyes. Zena's ears tip forward, beginning the cutters and the jaws of life. Jaws, I repeat? Don't like the sound of that. Spreads metal. They're probably getting close. Come on, we need to get out of the way. I ain't going anywhere. I hear her, she says. I can tell from the weary sound of her voice that she's had this conversation before. But the best thing for Ivan right now is to let the humans do their thing. Think about it. Figure she's right. I give his fingers one last look. They don't move. Nothing. Nada. We pick our way to the bottom of the debris pile. Hang in there, Ivan, I call. We love you, buddy. I know it's crazy, but I listen anyway, hoping for a sign, any sign that he's still with us. All right, we'll stop there and then continue soon.